friends. So today I'm working on my Ford Escape Hybrid. I've got this horrible grinding sound when I stop. And it took a little while, but what I figured out is that this pad is worn out back here. And unfortunately, so is that rotor. No big deal. Get in there and kind of see that. So let's talk safety for a second. So one of the things I've done is I've put blocks under both front wheels to stop the vehicle from rolling forward. And I've got my jack. And then one of the things we need to do is disarm the high voltage battery. And we need to disconnect the 12 volt battery. And the reason we need to do this is because this is an electric booster on the brake system and it's computer controlled and it'll periodically test it and the last thing we want to happen is the brake system to test itself while we're working on it. I don't trust this thing any further than I can throw it so we're gonna disconnect the 12 volt battery. This is a 5 sixteenths I think it's actually an 8 millimeter but I couldn't find that and a 5 sixteenths does fit. We're just going to back that off comfortably and then we're going to pull this off. Try not to get grease all over my hands. I'm not having a whole lot of luck on this. Really should put gloves on. There we go. So now the battery's disarmed. The car can't do anything. And now I'm going to jack the vehicle up. need to jack it up any more than enough to get the tire off. trust any vehicle so when I'm working on them I always slide the tire underneath the vehicle it's just an extra margin of safety I don't plan on putting this on a jack stand because I'm not gonna have it up that long I hope so let's see what we got oh yeah that brake pads worn out really the shock is worn out too it shouldn't have all this grease all over it but that's not today's project um, so let's go ahead and get this off. I need a pair of needle nose pliers to get these off. Those are from the factory. I'll be right back. All right, so what we want to do is grab these little tabs. And hopefully we can damage them and get these things off. 
my screwdriver and I also brought back a fan because it's hot out. It's Texas. screwdriver behind it and then I can get a hold of it with the pliers. Maybe. I hate these things. They're a pain in the ass. They put them on here to make the assembly easier so that the rotors don't fall off while they're moving down the assembly line.
This really wouldn't be that bad if this thing would quit spinning on me. There we go. Good riddance. Alright. Now I've got to get my rotors off on the back side, so uh, let me figure out what size Allen wrench that is. I'm going to guess, and I'll be right back. Socket or Allen key. this loose because I don't want to put any strain on these cables. Um, it requires uh, a computer at the dealership to bleed the brakes on this thing, which is just asinine. But, you know, they don't call them Steeler ships for nothing. And that's a 10 millimeter socket. So I'm set that down there. Oh, and there 
there's our problem. We're rubbing right there, so I'm gonna send these to recycle. I'll be right back. Well, first. Let me get a hammer. If your caliper, or if your rotor doesn't have a whole lot of um, scoring on it, or it's the right thickness, you wanna use a rubber mallet. But this one's gonna go away, so. And you just want to break it loose like that and then this recycles just fine don't breathe the dust it's probably got bad things in it that'll cause problems you might be suspicious of the deals you get on rock auto but these are bendex brake pads and as you can see they're a little bit thicker so i'm conf i'm comfortable with these I i'm confident that they'll be good quality pads because they are bendix and this is a ray bestos You can see right here, it says Ray Bestos. Um, now, the, the kicker is that pads, rotors, and shipping were 80 bucks. Hell, AutoZone and O'Reilly and Advance Auto wanted $80 for just one thing. And they, 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 I mean, they didn't want quite that much. Now, there is a little bit of a ding here that shouldn't be here, so this is probably a second, but who cares? That's not going to get anywhere near... This little ding is not going to get anywhere near where there's important stuff going on. And we're going to go ahead and just take that out. So what I'm doing here. So I just pop it. It'll come loose. And I'm going to send it to trash. Alright, so... Nice, new, shiny pad rotor. You just can't beat that for 18, 20 bucks. Trying to look at these and see which one's inner and outer, but I think, I don't think it matters. I really don't. this way it looks the same so I, I don't think there's an up and a down or an in and an out on these some vehicles do Awfully wide. There is an outer. It has the wide flange and an inner, which has a narrow flange. And they pack the inners together and the outers together, which is uh, frankly stupid. But whatever. So again, the wide ones go on the outer.
I can do this without hurting my hands. this in a little further and the easiest way to do this is to just balance that up there for a minute nicer ways to do this, but this works.
right, it was just getting it to fit. So now it fits. Socket stuck, so. in with the tool. Finish it off by hand. is probably 
probably already set to 105, which is what this vehicle prefers. this down I'm not done I'm not done now that I've forked this down what I'm gonna do is take it around the block when I'm done with the other side and then I'll torque it down again and make sure it's good um, things
All right, so let me get some tools and get the rest of this out. As before, let's get this out. Let's loosen this hose clamp. Yeah, the other uh, shock is shot, which it's not really a surprise at 160,000 miles. So I'll order some of those from Rock Auto and that'll be another project for another day. You know, I've really not spent very much money on maintenance on this vehicle since I've owned it. So not really upset that it needs shocks. There are some little caps back here. Basically, you're going to turn this till it doesn't seem like it want to goes in, go anymore, and then you're going to let go of it and pull the caliper off. Okay. Woo, that's pretty pretty bad there. So now that's not completely in. So what we want to do is bring this back in here. And we're just going to squeeze it all the way in because it'll make life simpler when we go to reassemble. All right. Now they make special tools for this, but you really don't need anything more advanced than a C-clamp. same same part I'd say we got the squeak out of that mouse I really would ah, there we go that dust boots a little tight but it ain't gonna matter back in though. Okay. It's getting ready to rain, which is kind of a blessing because, you know, quite frankly, it's hot. It's been hot, hot, hot in Texas lately. Oh, 
does not want to stay in. It's hurting my hands. It's irritating. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and get that just in here. Bottom is always first. So what's giving it grief is this tail wasn't in the right spot. rain so I got to so I got this in the trick is that the uh, tabs on the brake pads have to be behind the, um, the support and there's a piece of the caliper that has to be inside of it and those weren't aligned properly in. Now we're going to deal with this tricky upper one. Alright, that's in. So now we can tighten it with the impact wrench. Thank you. 
used to be that you need a long extension because it's the extension flare that interferes with clearance. Yep. Another eighth of a turn, but every turn is important on brakes. Let me get my wrench filled up, fired up. All right, as before, we're just going to snug this up. Not that direction. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this and remember to like and subscribe. Uh, if you're interested in more Ford Escape videos, uh, I have a uh, playlist for that and you can see uh, the brakes did well. The wheels did a little, did a little tightening after I got back from my two block road trip. Um, that's kind of normal and expected. That's a good thing. So torqued them down and we're good to go.